Arig, guess what racket we got today? What? The new Solinko Whiteout 305. Solinko racket? No? Yep. <laughs> Who knew they make rackets? Tell me that. Yeah, I feel like this video is going to get a lot of views. Yeah, good. Nice decision. Yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Gladiator Tennis. And today we have another Solinko racket, but this time it's almost custom made for me. It's a little heavier, more control oriented, and it's 98 inch. So yeah, also it's strong with my strings at my tension. So Kari, check out the specs. Fuck you. Grisha, tell me, man. Nothing. I was just, I just like how two professional guys came to play. This is your bag. This is my bag. Then it, yeah, that's. It. I mean, right. talk, talk about the racket. I'll talk about the racket. As we said, it's, it's almost like made for me. It's, it's more control oriented, which is really good. I didn't mind the, the previous one, but this one should be more. Uh, like yes, and I'm really excited to try it with 10 grams, which right now it doesn't have it. But yeah, 10 grams might take it to the way that I like, so, so, so. All right, all right, all right, all right. <sighs> One more, please, man. All right. What are these guys in Solinko doing? The blackout was a really, really decent frame, but just not for my style. But now this whiteout, damn. It is five grams heavier than the blackout. It has a smaller 98 inch head and it's white. In terms of specs, you could kind of compare it to something like a Wilson Blade 16 by 19. As you might know, with the new Solinko rackets, you can change the weight of the racket by changing the butt cap. And that's what I did. So I just took out the original one, and now this is like 10 grams. Because, you know, why, why do five if, 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 if I'm a beast? You're right. Just like me. That was a bit too much though. Not in terms of weight, but in terms of balance. If I had some lead on the hoop, I'd keep the 10 gram cap. But as I didn't have lead on the hoop, I decided to go with five grams. Now to the play test. So good. The racket has a great feel, awesome stability, decent control and very okay spin. On the forehands, the racket was close to perfect for me. As my forehand isn't completely flat and I do apply some topspin to the ball, the 16 by 19 string pattern was very pleasant. And at the same time, when I was going for a more aggressive and flatter shot, the stability was on point, giving me that confidence and encouraging me to play more aggressive. On the backhand side, where my shot is way more flat, the feel of the racket could be better. I would prefer an 18 by 20 string pattern and a higher weight without fucking up the balance. That is always the case for me. If I really like the racket on the forehand, chances are, backhands are gonna lag. With the wideout, it wasn't too bad though. Like, I didn't feel the confidence to lead the point with my backhand like I usually do with my gravity, but I wasn't feeling a massive disadvantage. Volleys, like with the blackout, felt great, though here's understandable why. It is a maneuverable and very stable frame. That's kind of what you come to expect from it. Returning was absolutely awesome for the same reasons as the volleys, or maybe because of my incredible talent. Could be either, really. Though yeah, both return winners and unreturnable returns unreturnable returns, okay, were happening, especially with the forehand. On the serves, it was great. Not excellent, but great. Because it was pretty much okay on every single serve, but didn't exceed anyway. First flat serves were fast and controlled, but many rackets provide better speeds and better stability. First slice serves were good, but I have seen better angles with other frames. And the kicks were really good for a 98, but again, many rackets have a way better access to topspin on the kick serves than this. It sounded quite negative, but I really did like it on the serves actually. Overall, as you might have noticed, the frame really surprised me in a good way, and I feel like this racket could be a good choice for very many. Mainly those who want a control-oriented racket, but without going balls out on control, and still having a decent potential for spin and defensive shots. My main concern with this is that, well, it loses tension and goes through strings like a mother f Though, if this isn't something that you really care about that much, for sure, but like for sure, give it a try. So, 
We're not sure why we're recording from this angle, but uh, at least you can appreciate my boobs <laughs> that are bigger than Kim K's boobs. <laughs> yeah. Yes, guys, but also if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe and hit the bell. <coughs> and follow us on Instagram because we have additional content there, updates yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, so much content that we promise it's gonna be, we're gonna be more active on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. All right, check this out. A water bottle flip with a full bottle of water. <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> okay. Nice change of location, huh? Yeah, nice change of location. Uh, and a racket perfectly made for Grisha and not exactly sure about perfectly made for me. So in case it wasn't already good for you, you put your dampener of here and we don't have any more. So I'm going to play with that. And yeah, let's try it out. In theory, this is the racket that I should hate. But theories don't always work in life, my friends. Sorry for sounding like an old man, but this phrase is actually very true when it comes to this model. I would normally go for its brother racket with its 100 inch square head size, but the feeling on this 98 head size racket was so tempting that I might consider changing my mind. The real name of this racket should be easy as f because that's how it felt to do every single shot with it. On the forehand side, receiving deep shot wasn't a big issue because the maneuverability of the frame allowed me to get out of compromising positions. But at the same time, it shined even more when I went inside the court and did some approaches or fast low forehands. The slice on the backhand felt so accurate that it felt almost like grabbing the ball and putting it exactly where I want it. But sometimes, sadly, sometimes you should also do two-handed spinning backhands and in that situations I was able to do it decently and got excited and even hit some backhand flat shots and when it comes to the design I feel like I live in a parallel world where as less effort the designers put on making the racket the more attractive it gets for me like it's so simple that there's absolutely nothing wrong with it well there's almost no design so yeah but on the serious note, this racket would be very recommendable for players that like to base their game on their serve because it allows you to variate every single serve, doesn't matter with what kind of effect you want to hit it, but at the same time it's more than decent in the rest of the shots. So you have a wide spectrum of good shots which you can use to play an aggressive type of tennis. And there's nothing more satisfying than an aggressive fun tennis. So let's finish on this good note and go to the greats. Thank you for watching.